<laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, Flash. Hey, good to see you. Congratulations. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Hang on a minute. Hey, what's up? I'm going to the hotel. I will be back here by 4. Oh, he was, you, wasn't he who was asking me where it is? Yeah. Who's there? Well, you're going to the Roosevelt or whatever it is? No. Leonardo. Uh, Leonardo. I'm not going there either. You think, Yay! I, would, you think I would remember Leonardo? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I yeah exactly. Either. I was staying at the Motel 6 just down the street. That one down there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because that'll be a quieter area, and then your stuff can be heard, and then the main stage can That'd do its thing. Yeah, fine. Okay, cool. cool. When, when, whenever you're able to get it over there, feel okay, free to do that. I kind of put Emily in charge of organizing the art cars, so once you get over there, she can. Okay. So she's the one. Instead of me yelling at you, it'll be her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What is it? It's a dog with just a butt in there. They're, they're called something. You can get them. Yeah. That looks funny. Take a picture of it. Oh, I did. Uh, with his little butt with, look what's in the butt. Did you look closely? I'm going to take a picture of it. Who is that? Mary. Hello. How are you doing? Mm, nice to see you. Hey, they just said it's canceled and they have to move the whole thing. It's three feet to the left? Yeah. Baby bang bang. Homeland Security is going to be here. I brought back, 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 yeah. back to put over his head. Right. And he just goes, bam, 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 bam. Did you almost say Herod Blank? We decided that the outhouse was out too far and I had a big Chrysler, so we got behind it with another car and we pushed it like a five miles an hour towards the man. Yeah. And then the door opens and this guy looks out and he's going, this long haired guy going, oh fuck, there's somebody in there. So we stop and he's going, and his wind was blowing back like the, the Max, that old Max L commercial. And uh, he, he, uh, he looked out and we started to apologize. He goes, why'd you stop? And we go, oh, okay. We pushed him a little farther and then a shit truck with its rotating light on pulled us over. I go, wow, I've never been pulled over by a shit truck before. Yeah. And they were really mad, but we told them we were making a movie and then they go, oh. So we'll bring That's it right the excuse back. I use. We'll bring it right back. I thought you were just some, another Hollywood person for a minute. Sorry. <laughs> Look who's there. We are. And many little dogs are now approaching. Get in before the crowds. <laughs> Pretty nuts, huh? <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with any of this. Look who's here! Hi! 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 So you're at the hotel? What happened to my oh, yeah. uh, Actually, uh, Spy got your hotel room. But, oh, okay. But we'll figure it out. Okie dokie. That is, your hotel room is my hotel room. Excellent, that's wonderful. Bed, but, okay. But 
Markel is, is really the worst horrible sleaze bag thing you can imagine. It. Remarkably so, amazing things about the pictures. But it's just all part of the history. Yes. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Look at John Law. John Law's hanging. Oh, man. That was great. That, that was guy, fun. I love that cop. Man. That oh, cop yeah. Was awesome. He's going, he's going, one false move and we're moving in. <laughs> Thank you, sir.
I wish I wish they would arrest them all now. John Law. The days are right now. The days of our lives. I think there will be a person watching. I mean, I try. Pray for these people. Pray for these people. Pray for these people. We all need to love and pray for these people as they continue to spread life through the community. They have cast out lethal contingency. Uh, there's my camera. I want to thank you for... Uh, is this the line? Harold Camping said you can have his ticket. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, it's getting stupid now. <laughs> I just realized this is it. This is it. No flashes. You ready? Camera to camera. Oh yeah. Camera versus camera. <laughs> A theater and some old friends. Here's the guy is the one that is. Sorry, cacophony person. Did you see that in Lisa? Cameras first. I'm recording yet, okay. Oh, I wasn't on record either. Why am I oh, doing this? What am I doing? Oh, I'm taking stills. I'm on the wrong function. The famous button. guy does not shoot me. You got the same thing? No, it's a different one. No, it's a 700. That, I'm sure, is an inferior machine. There you go. I'm sorry. 700. Yeah, exactly. Now, now what we're rare, locked. Oh, yeah. what a rare moment. Uh, what a rare moment. So there's a bar here? Is that what I see? Is it weird at all to see people that have radio shows? See, to me it's really weird. They don't look like what they sound like. Because so. oh. it gives you that, you know, you can change something. But it gives you something different. Wow. Look at all those people. Yeah. Uh, it's infrared. Yeah. 
Oh, it's slim. Oh, cool, yeah. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I, I, I was going to tell everybody I pranked you all. Uh, thanks for your money, but uh, I guess they finally got it going. All right. Oh, tell us more. kind of dispersed. Get off the stage! Harry Blank! Harry! Harry! Blame Harry, get up here. Blame it on Harry. Some people have questions. I don't know. You can't trust him. He wears a hat. Hey, by the way, by the way, today is my really good friend, Harry Blank's birthday. Uh, happy birthday. A surprise party. We got like cupcakes there. We got like, you know, a couple dozen cupcakes. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, if we're going to do this, we should do this really quick because uh, we're crazy. Hello, everybody. Hi, Eric. Hi, Mr. Blank. Is there something in the box? A bomb. <laughs> okay, hello everybody, I'm Harry Blank, uh, I'm the art car guy, and uh, I've been doing a coffee event since the late 80s, and then I've uh, been filming Burning Man for the last 20 years, this will be my 20th year, that is if I get a ticket, and uh, I'd like to, uh, Who cares? We'll, we'll let the panel introduce their themselves and their involvement with the Cacophony Society over the years, and of course John. Uh, so come on up here, everybody, and we will get this Q&A going. Nice hats! Hey, by the way, uh, I'm selling t-shirts uh, 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 back in the corner uh, at the, over there. So uh, they're, uh, they're cheap. Who are but, you? Uh, yeah, anyway. 
Sell out. Put your phone well, down. Let's, uh, let's start with our introduction. Is Chuckles the Clown coming to you? Okay. Well, let's start. Let's start from here and go down with uh, who you are and your involvement in the Cacophony Society, etc. Oh, jeez. I am Reverend Al, and uh, I was the uh, chief paper pusher for the Los Angeles Cacophony Society Lodge. <laughs> My name is Michael Michael, among many other aliases. And uh, I've been doing weird shit for a long time. True. And I'm only following in the footsteps of others who did it before me. Uh, well, you, you kind of know who I am, but I'm also a Cacophony Society member, uh, you know, uh, thanks to Reverend Al and uh, all of his uh, labors. Um, so. Yeah, I'm here, and uh, to my You're death. father of Tracy's child. Yeah, uh, my name is John Law, and when I was, uh, eight, I was 18 years old, uh, I ran into a group called the Suicide Club, and I never was able to really hold down a job after that, and uh, kind of continued doing the events or trying to create, build and create events like I had been exposed to by that group, the Suicide Club. And uh, the couple of the guys who started that group, are de they're dead now, they're passed away. Gary Warren was uh, uh, 35 when he died of a heart attack in 1983. And he, he kicked off a lot of stuff that uh, John put in his movie and stuff that's come later, had some influence on some of the stuff happening. He never heard of him because he died when he was really young. And he also wasn't doing this stuff for attention. He was doing it because he needed to. And that's the thing about cacophony. I think the people who are involved in it were doing stuff because stuff they kind of needed to. Anyway, that's, that's what it looks like to me. Who's that, John? Hey, it's Chuckles. She, where the hell is she? Hang on. Chuckles. Chuckles. Ch Ch Chuckles, where the hell are you? Chuckles? Tracy. Chuckles. Chuckles. Wow, I can't believe we did all that shit. <laughs> and we're still doing some shit. It's now in the sub sub cacophony stage. The power to do these amazing things is out there. You all have the potential. Michael, Michael, self help. <laughs> Call everybody. And I really want to encourage you to take the ideas and the workshop that have been created and go a little bit further beyond that edge to push the boundaries. Heavier caliber. <laughs> the consumer culture that we find ourselves in, which confines us, limits us, corrals us into small boxes, we can break out of that. And that really is what this is all about. And I want to thank Reverend Al, which I met in 1991 when I handed out some flyers and he showed up. We were doing events which may or may not have happened. <laughs> Reverend Al took the ball and ran further than the San Francisco Cacophony Society had ever thought of. He pushed the envelope. Thank you, Reverend Al. That's just because we were scared, actually. And I want to thank uh, my friends, all these guys here, and these guys, and uh, everybody who came and didn't leave the theater. Um, I have hangers. I had to get dressed in the toilet stall on the way over. There's a fabulous uh, museum exhibition um, going on, and uh, there wasn't a lot of time for wardrobe, but uh, you have to go over there and see the exhibition that uh, some people worked on very hard, and it, uh, you, can study, you can study the things that you saw briefly in the film and uh, take pictures and pose with things. Don't touch anything, though. Don't, it, some of the paint's still wet. Harry? Thank you. Um, what do you want to jump into Q&A or you questions or do you want to continue this? Chuckle, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. I'm Chuckle. Hi, I'm Chuckle. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I really had to take a big little crap after your movie, John. <laughs> in the bathroom right now, so sorry I was late. <laughs> All right, Chuckles. Well, oh, wow. Hey, free beer. Excellent. 
Uh, here, here. Well, man, what's that? Boing boing. Boing boing. Uh, he, he didn't. He didn't make it. <laughs> well, maybe we should open up the questions because we could pontificate. Open up the questions. Open up the questions. Open up the questions. Yes. Uh, I'm, I came to LA too late for all of this, but um, I just really am curious about the film and how it was made. Did you guys film all of your activities over the years because you were voyeurs, and, or did you want a record of it? Did you think that it actually would be no, Doug, well, interesting Doug and valuable well, man, at some point? And the film was beautiful, John. <laughs> the history of Cacophony and frankly the Suicide Club and all that we've done lies somewhere in the fringe of reality. Events which may or may not have taken place are therefore just as valid as any other. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Next. I, you know, I don't think any of this shit was really done with any kind of grand purpose, uh, uh, including myself documenting this 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 shit. Uh, I happen to be just, you know, a little bit part of the lunatic fringe. So um, I don't know. It's just obsession. But I, I think we just did all this shit for the hell of it because it was fun and um, with no no grand purpose. That's that's my take on it, at least. I'm frankly amazed at the stuff, the footage that uh, John has, has come up with. I was doing stuff and I remember vaguely seeing somebody with a camera in the background. And he managed to find some incredible, incredible stuff. Any other questions? Yeah. I know I speak for everyone in the room when I ask, why wasn't there more of me in the movie? <laughs> Because, because there's just so goddamn many of yous in, out there, so. This, yeah, we're kind of dying, we're kind of dying up here, and the reason is because we're not performers, and we're not, I mean, the, the people who are involved in Suicide Club and Cacophony were basically mentally deranged people who had nothing better to do, and they got together with other people who uh, didn't really fit in, you know, square peg, round hole, whatever. And, uh, you know, when I joined the Suicide Club, there was no, I mean, the people who were in there were not hipsters, they weren't cool, they didn't know who, where the good parties were, they didn't really know much of anything about that. They knew they wanted to go out and feel things and live life in a way that, you know, maybe they, maybe they hadn't seen on TV. I mean, I don't know, I don't know why we did that. I mean, I was inspired by a guy named Gary Warren, who, you know, his inspiration was, uh, was basically um, movies, um, weird pulp fiction. He, he liked the Dottas and the Surrealists a little bit. That stuff kind of had some influence on what we were doing, but... The basic thing was to go out, he, he wanted to live each day as though it were his last, and he died at age 35, and maybe he had a, a prescient thing going on there, but I, re I, th I used to think that he did things so that we would uh, go out and have a good time and have an enter entertaining time or learn something about ourselves or challenge our fears. But I realized later, I mean, uh, he was doing it really in a way for himself to find out what he was capable of or find out what he was afraid of and what, you know, what, really, it's really frightening. Cacophony is not, it wasn't fun all the time, it was fucking <laughs> scary. It wasn't a great, entertaining, fun thing where you could go out and, uh, and be safe. There was nothing safe about it. Uh, there were, were some events that became safe, repeating events over and over again, very safe. You know, once you've done the, the Santa thing. I mean, I remember the first time we did Santas, there were 30 Santas, and people, with their jaws were hanging out because nobody really thought, it wasn't a meme, it wasn't something in their head that had, that, that had been placed there already. They hadn't thought about it. And, uh, you know, I remember some punk rock kids frowning at us, and. Uh, my girlfriend Vanessa, who's this little tiny Santa, right? We're going along this punk rock kid frowning at us really bad and like flipped her off and fuck you, Santa. And she goes, fuck you, kid. And this 16-year-old punk rock kid fell off the thing he was sitting on and laughing his ass off. And Santa told him to fuck off. It made his week, it made his month, it made his Christmas, which is most important. You know? Let's hear something from Chuckles. Or somebody asked Chuckles a question. Sing a song. Chuckles has got nothing. I, th I think I have a memory and I want to have it confirmed. Uh, what, one of my favorite, oh, can I say one of my favorite events? There were no. so many. Um, you were at um, a Renaissance fair, I believe. Was that one of the ones that you did? And I think I remember you were in the mud and you were a leper. Covered in 
grapes with, uh, with this was this was you, correct? Grapes that with um, latex that you poked with the pins, so all your sores were oozing, and you were there, there would have been a muddy spot that you had found, and you were rolling around, screaming and crying because you had been infected with some sort of a plague. And um, this fond memory is this woman who was dressed in very expensive Renaissance gear. Obviously, she had worked herself up to play Lady So-and-So for a long time and spent a lot of money on it. She was holding these two beers. She probably had spent about six or seven bucks on each beer. She was so angry that you had sort of screwed up her fantasy that she threw them both right in your face as you were laying, writhing, crying on the ground. Because Lady So-and-So didn't approve of you. Am I, am I getting this story correct? That was one of, the fam one of the best things I think I've ever seen in my life. Um, thank you, that's a good, strong compliment. That, you can say more about it, because you were there, right, Gimby? That was like the fucking hardest event to get kicked out of. We had to work so hard. <laughs> Probably sort of if, like we had really good makeup that was all organic. It was like grapes were boiled and a, a, like this gelatin uh, skin that peeled off, and that's where the Elka Seltzer came in again, sort of foaming a lot of the mouth <laughs> with rabies. Yep. And um, but yeah, we had to um, like we rolled in the trash cans, we ate out of the trash cans, we ate the chicken, we the, um, we jumped on the men, we were a little creepy, and uh, we. Um, um, like ate our sores, and then so we had to go extreme measures. I think somebody had to steal from the tip jar, from the money from the thing, and it just seemed like it took a tickle hours to get out of there, but that it was funny. I, I, that, the only thing, it's just that I never understood the Renaissance Pleasure Fair. Uh, there, that, where, I was always, you know, where was the bear baiting? There was no bear baiting in there. And uh, we were the only, I think we were the only ones there accusing the Jews of uh, poisoning the wells and calling for a I don't, It was very inauthentic. I don't remember any uh, massages uh, in the Renaissance, uh, hot oil massages. Uh, we offered them oil massages with the, well, the hot chicken grease massage, you know, those chicken legs they gave away. I guess it was turkey. I mean, if we'd had turkey, it probably would have worked. But yeah, that was tough. That was tough. It was tough. People always want to make excuses for you. It's really hard in Los Angeles, too, because people think you're, they see something they can't explain, and they think, oh, well, they're making a movie. And it really kills it. It kills it. It kills it. We went to, uh, we went to, uh, there's a thing called Universal City, up, uh, City Walk, yeah, up up by uh, Universal Studios and they built it for tourists so they don't have to go into the real city. <laughs> it has all the best parts of LA all like in a one little block and, and we, I think the event was called Shopping Post Apocalypse or something like that and we, we burned our clothes, we went to the park to burn our clothes because it just seemed like something to do and uh, we, when we showed up everybody uh, insisted we had just come off the new backdraft ride. <laughs> It just ruins stuff. <laughs> it, it, having the movies is, uh, having that uh, access to fantasy is, is dangerous. It's, I think we should not be making movies. I have a question for you, Al, because there's a, a it mentioned that you've retired from, from this or something. How, how do you feel looking back at all these years you've been doing this, and, and how can you stop from, you know, having fun or something, you know? Uh, yeah, oh, now I do a show called The Art of Bleeding. www.artofbleeding.com. They run the safety of RT, the robot teacher, and dozens of sexy, sexy nurses. Actually, The Art of Bleeding kind of grew out of a, an event we did down on Venice Beach. Uh, well, one of the things. We, would, we went down and gave away uh, free plaster casts to unbroken arms as just a sort of precautionary measure. And, uh, you know, I think it's the way that all, everything, everybody here has had stuff they did in Cacophony spill out into their lives without calling it that. And, uh, you know, people ask if Cacophony's still going on, and I just tell them it's just more diffuse. It's just like, well, it's like carbon monoxide that you can't see it, you know, but it's in the air. 
Any other questions, ideas? Is the DVD coming out soon? No. No, no, no. Uh, but how, how many hours of footage, I can tell you that. I, I, God damn, it was like in the thousands. There was a lot of stuff to go call through to, to get this. But um, no, I'm gonna probably just do these things for a while. Uh, next. Yeah, I mean, as far as the events go, the thing that always the thing that always completely compelled me was that anyone who's in the group, from the Suicide Club to the Cacophony Society, could come up with an idea for the stupidest or craziest or you know slimiest thing that they would want to do that they would never ever consider doing by themselves, and then they'd have all these people who you know some of them uh, you know maybe <laughs> some of them would would just get together and do whatever idea or whatever concept they came up with, and the frightening things uh, that, that you got through or the frightening things that you that you did. After you did them, they were no longer this horrible shibboleth that you were, that you were uh, terrified of. I mean, I used to climb things. I was a really good climber. We used to climb the bridges a lot in the suicide club. I wasn't afraid of climbing at all, so it wasn't a real challenge for me. The real challenge was getting naked on a fucking cable car. I mean, I almost got sick. I mean, I was, my, my stomach was tied up in knots beforehand. Just getting naked in public was like such a horror thing. No, I'm not going to get that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm back. But, <laughs> but that was it. It was just doing things that were that were frightening to, to you, and you were able to do it because you had people around you who'd help, who'd help you through it in some kind of weird, cathartic way, and you didn't have to pay them money like they were a psychologist. Yeah, trickles will help. Yeah, that's it. So, I, you know, how are we doing on the install there, Al? Most of the paint is dry. Yes, I mean. I'm sorry, okay, well, I don't know, uh, how long have we been up here? How long have we been dying? Years. A lifetime. A lifetime, yeah. All right, what, here? Who has good cacophony stories they want to share? Oh, I love that Chicken called this the geriatric cacophony, like, reunion event. But maybe you want to come say your funny story. Say it. I would like to be entertained by the people, like that. Like, come. Okay, so, now you have to go up there. And who was praised John for? He made a movie. Fuck oh, yeah. Okay, so it's not that funny, but I was 12 years old, and uh, a bunch of nice men came over to our house, and they were in business suits. And, uh, God, this is like a two second story. They were in business suits, and they were waiting for my sister to get dressed, and she took hours and hours because she would be freaking out and doing weird psychedelic things in her room. And anyways, they were standing around. It, it maybe had been 20 minutes. They looked at the pool, and they were in their, their nicest suits. They were about to go to some big function event or some fucking, I don't know what it was. And uh, they, they looked at me, and they looked at themselves, and they looked out at the pool, and they're like, huh. And they smiled, and they just promptly jumped inside, suits and all. And from that moment on, I, like I'd already been kind of into weird, you know, dark things from very young age, but at that moment on, I knew that I was a member of, and I didn't know what they were, but I knew that, that I, that that was it for me. So that's my story. You may already remember. Who are the men in suits? Could you stand up? The men in suits, could you stand up? No. Him, Derek him, and who loves 12 year old girls stand up <laughs> okay more questions or stories come share so, cacophony said it's okay. yeah I've got a question um, there was a cacophony event um, I think it was I think it was the, uh, the pus drive, uh, collecting pus at the farmer's market, and uh, I believe the director of this film took photographs of everybody at that event, and can we ever see those photographs, Tom? <laughs> Go to the museum. Go to the museum, folks, and uh, enjoy, enjoy many things that have never been seen by most people's eyes. Aaron? Yeah, I was just in China in December and uh, for showing the Arcar movie. 
And in China, it's illegal to even have a bumper sticker on your car. And in fact, even to be able to drive a car, you have to have permission from the government because there's so many cars and there's too many people. But I, I was reading this stuff about Homeland Security and all that. And, and what are your thoughts on this whole uh, uh, Homeland Security thing and, and where that's going? <laughs> Homeland Security? Is Homeland Security in the house? Yo. Nope. Come on, come on, bring it on, Homeland Security, bring it on, yo. All right. Whoa. I'll treat. Yep. Yeah. No. He says you're off the hook. This this is Agent McCoy. Uh, what many of you might have read about. Um, but this this is the uh, this is the phone uh, the real McCoy yeah the real McCoy. Real McCoy. Uh, had it for breakfast. Homeland Security. Anyway, I think we're dying here. Uh, you're dead, Jerry and Ryan. All right, we, we're jumping the shark. We're jumping the shark. The shark is dead. Any more questions, comments? We're going pee. <laughs> Um, so I just have to say, my favorite event was always the uh, Art for Hire uh, events where you, the uh, stooges or people would check off the boxes, the type of art they want, and hand over to five bucks. And I always wanted to know whatever happened if their pictures were taken of the art on that. But the question I had was always in the 20 years since, between <laughs> flash mobs and then prop everywhere guys and all that, were any sort of stunts or pranks or groups where you've seen and went, fuck, I wish we had came up with that idea. So the question was uh, about flash mobs and stuff. Was there anything that we wish we had come up with? You know, I, th I think we were pushing the edge. Flash mobs, we would mail out a newsletter and you never know how many people would show up. It was like a flash mob in slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> I got one. Somebody put up a billboard on Market Street in San Francisco above the Mint that said, don't do drugs, call a friend. And it had this kind of wasted looking woman on it. And some brilliant person put up there, don't do drugs alone, call a friend. We don't know who did that, but I wish I did. Well, I'd like to just say quickly that um, I'm here basically because of, of John and Michael because in the late 80s, they were the ones that invited me to these cacophony events and it's had a huge impact on my life. And this film is going to have a huge impact on other people and to plant more seeds for more of these things. You got a seed? Cool. Uh, but I want to I get back to the movie just a little bit and, and commend you, John, on, on such a library of, of unbelievable... Uh, footage and very important documentation, uh, very important cultural movement that all of these people are part of, and your editing is, is, is really unbelievable. So uh, I'd like to commend you to that, and uh, should we continue or we could go to the Art Center? We're done? Okay, we're going to go to the Art Center. Art Center! One question, one question. Can I have a question? Cupcakes. So which one's Larry Harvey, the guy with the hat? Yeah.
shadow of my former self. We had a bunch of sculpture work up in, oh, in San Francisco I to when I lived here. Okay. I lived there, I didn't get shit. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, be yeah. I mean, I did a couple of pieces. Down at least three or four TV shows, shows this week. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. yeah.
Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Happy birthday to you. That was, you. That was Thank you. I, that everyone was like, it was John's event, John Bowman. Yeah. I didn't really want to. He, he presented me a birthday cake before the QA, and I was like, mortified. You did? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, this that... is his moment, not mine. That's yeah. Cute. I don't want to take it. Yeah, John's water. such a sweet, he's such a sweetheart. He always wants he to see other people's moments. Plus, he must be so exhausted. I know. He really does have. He held, him, he held up pretty well, I would say. He held up pretty well. This poor guy's film was 30 minutes late starting, and he was dying because he didn't know if his movie was going to play or not, and he had four or 500 people in the audience. But a friendly audience. Yes, okay. all on his side. Totally on his side. Yeah. Totally. They should have just left the lights up because it was so fun looking at everybody. Oh, in the audience. Fun. Yeah. yeah. You did a good job as a moderator too. You totally kept it going. Did I? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I was worried that because Hal Robbins was there, and I'm like, I, I know. Hal, I said, Hal, why didn't you do this? He goes, Exactly. I don't know. Well, I was thinking he, too, he could have been up there because people like Hal. He's a good, He's a good. crowd pleaser. Yeah, he should have. Yeah. <laughs> I need to see something. Wait. Wait. Just give me a minute. Give me a minute. I need to concentrate. This was a, uh, a wooden. A wooden fire hydrant yeah. in a pet area of a rest stop. Nice. <laughs> he looks like a Christian cross. That's your birthday card. Hey, thanks, a bit buddy. of a scary self-portrait. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See you over there. Alright. Can someone hold it up to the camera? Will you be able to see it? Yeah, you gotta, be, you gotta get that shot. Somebody have a light. Oh, you got a light. You got a light. Oh, he's got a light. I don't know if he might be too. Is light. that alright? He's got lots of light. I love your light, but. I'm wondering, is it better to have a, a light than a mic or a mic than a light? Yeah. <laughs> 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 When they're born, the clean and the clean bones gone, they shall have scars at elbow and foot. Though they go mad, they shall be saved. Though they sink through the sea, they shall rise again. Though lovers be lost, love shall not. And death shall have no dominion. And death shall have no dominion under the windings of the sea or waves break loud on the seashore where blew a flower may a flower no more lift its head to the blows of the rain though they go mad and dead as nails heads of the character hammer through daisies break in the sun till the sun breaks down and death shall have no domain
burst from the roots, pump from the earth and rock the secret oils that drive the grass. In the beginning was the Word, the Word that from the solid bases of the light abstracted all the letters of the void, and from the cloudy bases of the breath the Word flowed up, translating to the heart first characters of birth and death. In the beginning was the secret brain. The brain was celled and soldered in the thought before the pitch was forking to a sun, before the veins were shaking in their sieve. Big old heads in the world. <laughs> <laughs> 